Hey everybody, today we are going to talk about the leaf shutter on the Fuji X100F and why it makes this camera so unique. But before we do that, I want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel. And also, in the description for this video, I like to put links to a lot of the stuff that I use on my camera. People are always wanting to know, oh, where'd you get your strap and where'd you get your button and things like that. I like to put those links in the description for you. So if you click those links, you can find those things on Amazon. And if you buy them, I get like a dollar or something and it helps keep this channel going. So uh, I would encourage you to please do that. Also, don't forget to have a podcast called Photobomb and it's available anywhere that podcasts are found. So be sure and check that out. All right. Let's talk about the leaf shutter on this camera. If you go and you look at reviews for the Fuji X100F or any of the Fuji X100 series, one of the things they're going to mention for sure is going to be the leaf shutter. And a lot of people don't really even know what a leaf shutter is. So let me explain it to you. It's a little bit technical, uh, but I think you'll be able to understand it. It's not too difficult. So a shutter in a regular camera, like a DSLR, is what's called a focal plane shutter, and it's it's what's a it's kind of a, a gate shutter. So imagine in a garage door, all right, and that's basically the way the shutter works on most cameras. So the shutter opens like this, and then it closes like this. Okay, so it doesn't open and close like a garage door. It's like it opens, and then another garage door closes from the bottom, and then it resets. So every time you take a picture, it opens, closes, resets, right? And it does this with incredible speed. And that's the kind of shutter that you have on a DSLR. And then a leaf shutter, which is the kind of shutter that you have in the Fuji X100F, is the old kind of shutter that, um, well, when you get into photography and you see pictures, it's the kind of shutter you think that all cameras have, where it's that iris that dials in and out, right? So it's a circle in the middle and it just gets bigger. And it's a bunch of leaves that make up the circle right now one of the big advantages to having a leaf shutter is that the leaf shutter is actually built into the lens usually you can buy lenses that are leaf shutter lenses as opposed to being built into the camera which is where the shutter is for a focal plane shutter what difference does that make well imagine you've got a water hose right and that water hose is spraying water and you want to block that water from getting on you. Well, you could take something as small as a quarter and you could put it right over the end of that hose and it would stop all the water. But if you took something and you backed it up from the hose, it wouldn't stop all the water. This would have to be bigger in order to keep the water from getting to you because the minute the water comes out of the end of the hose, it starts to spray. So the farther away the block is, the bigger the block has to be in order to keep the water from getting on you. Well, that's the way that light works coming through your camera lens. See, with a leaf shutter, the shutter is right up close to the lens. So it can actually be much smaller, right? But when you take it and you put it into a DSLR, there's more distance and there's going to be the whole uh, mirror mechanism right there as well. So because there's more difference, the shutter has to be bigger. What does that mean? Well, a bigger shutter can't open and close quite as fast as a small shutter can. Also, a small shutter can be lighter, right? So that's one of the advantages of a leaf shutter. But the biggest advantage to a leaf shutter has to do with using flash photography. And this is where it really shines on the Fuji X100F. Because every camera, like a DSLR with a, a gate shutter, all of these cameras have a flash sync speed. And this is a shutter speed that you can't go any faster than if you're using a flash. <laughs> it's a weird sentence, right? <laughs> you can't go any faster than. Uh, so for a Canon camera, for example, that shutter speed is 1 200th of a second. And I think for a Nikon camera, it's 1 250th of a second, which makes us Canon people a little jealous. But basically what that means is that if you're using a flash on your camera, you really can't go any faster than 1 200th of a second with your shutter speed. Because if you go faster than that, you're going to start to get what we call banding, a black band on your pictures. And you might be saying, what about high-speed sync? Well, high-speed sync is a different animal. And if you use high-speed sync on your flash, you can go faster with your shutter speed, but your flash will use less power because you're in high-speed sync and it's kind of a trade-off. So you really don't get the benefits that you would like to have from using uh, a flash with a fast shutter speed most of the time. High speed sync is kind of a, it's not the great thing people think it is in most situations. But the bottom line is you can't go over two hundredths of a second if you're using a uh, Canon camera, for example. But if you're using a leaf shutter, you can because a leaf shutter can open and close faster and a leaf shutter at some point is always going to be completely open. No matter how fast it's moving, it's always going to be completely open at some point. Whereas a gated shutter will open and actually start to close before it's completely open. So instead of getting like an open close, you'll get a band that moves across your image. And so the flash can't light during that entire length of time. And that's why you don't get good light on those pictures, 
but a leaf shutter doesn't have that problem. Now, what does this mean for you in practical applications? Well, what it really means is that with a camera like the X100F, you can shoot in bright sunlight and have a very shallow depth of field. You can shoot very wide, like at f4, f2.8, with a fast shutter speed and still use a flash, which is something that you really can't do with a camera that doesn't have a uh, leaf shutter. So let me show you some pictures to give you an example of what I'm talking about. So here's our mannequin on a bright sunny day and I've got the sun behind the mannequin because I uh, don't want it to be in the mannequin's eyes. <laughs> All right, so I've set my camera up at uh, ISO 100. So the chip is as unsensitive as it can be for bright sunlight. And I've got my shutter speed at 1 250th of a second, which is as fast as you can have the shutter speed when you're using a Nikon camera. And I've got the aperture at f4. And this is my picture, and as you can see, it's blown out. It's too bright. So what have I got to do to fix this? Well, I still want to stay at f4 because I want to have a shallow depth of field. So I can't change my ISO anymore. So I'm going to raise my shutter speed, right? So for the next picture, I raised my shutter speed to 500. So now I've raised my shutter speed from 1 250th of a second to 1 500th of a second. I've doubled the shutter speed, which means I've cut the available light in half. And as you can see, the background uh, is not as bright as it was before. I still have the same depth of field, though. Everything is uh, shallow around the mannequin, uh, but it's still a little too bright, right? So I'm going to cut it once again and change my shutter speed to 1 1,000th of a second. So now I've got my shutter speed at 1 1,000th of a second, which is doing a good job of knocking down the ambient light. You can see that the grass now is not as blown out. And I've still got that shallow depth of field because I'm at f4. But unfortunately, my subject's face is now dark because my subject's face is in shadow. The light is behind my subject. So I need to light my subject's face with a flash. Well, I can't do that because I'm at 1 1,000th of a second. And my maximum flash sync speed is 1 250th of a second. So, well, there's other ways around this, right? I, here's what I'll do. I'll go back to 1 250th of a second with my shutter speed, and I'll just raise my aperture, and that will bring down my ambient. So that's what I did. I went back to 250th of a second, and I raised my aperture to f5.6. So now we're knocking down the background a little bit more. And I've turned up my flash. So now I've got flash on my subject's face, and I am able to do that because my shutter speed is at f1250. However, I'm still really not getting the knockdown on the background light that I want, so I'm going to raise my aperture once again. So now we are at f8, and as you can see, we're knocking down the background even more, and the flash is lighting our subject's face, and we're making good progress here. But we can even go a little bit darker on the background if we want to, and we can raise the aperture to f11. So here we are at f11, and as you can see, we've really knocked the background down really well by raising our aperture up to f11, and our flash is lighting our subject, and everything is good. Only, it's actually not really good because what we've lost is the shallow depth of field that we want because we're at f11 so if you look at the mannequin everything is in focus on the mannequin and the grass is in focus too and i really want a shallow depth of field and there's another drawback to this as well the camera is sitting right in front of the mannequin so it's really not a problem to light this mannequin at f11 with a little flash that's built into the fuji x100f but if i was trying to light this mannequin from farther away because i'm at f11 that is limiting the amount of light coming into my camera from all sources and that includes the light coming from the flash so when you raise your aperture up, f8, f11, f16, you're cutting your flash power in half every single time you do that. And with a little bitty flash like the one that's in that camera, or even if you just have a, an aftermarket flash on the camera and it's a small flash, you don't have a lot of light from that flash that you can spare. So having to shoot at f11 can really be a problem. So it's a couple of things that kind of can hamstring you when you're shooting in bright light. However, if you have a leaf shutter, this isn't a problem. And here's why. So here we are back at f4 again, except now because we're using a leaf shutter, we can change our shutter speed and not have it affect our picture in a negative way. So we're going to raise our shutter speed to 1 500th of a second to knock down the background. Or we can go even faster. Here's 1 1,000th of a second, and here's 1 2,000th of a second on the Fuji X100F. And this is something you just can't do on a DSLR. And what's the difference? Well, look at the two pictures side by side. If you look at the one shot at 1 2,000th of a second in f4, 
The depth of field is so shallow that everything except the mannequin's face is out of focus, and professional photographers love that. We really want to be able to make just the subject's face in focus because it forces the viewer to look at what we want them to look at. It really makes them pop out. Now, if you look at the other picture where we couldn't raise the shutter speed and so we had to raise the aperture in order to knock down the background, at f11, you can see that everything is in focus. The grass is in focus, the mannequin's hands are in focus, and it's just not the same picture. And more importantly, it takes away options for us. And if there's one thing professional photographers love, it's options. We really want to be able to do whatever we want to do with a camera on location. Now, I know that there are a few people who are going to mention in the comments that the camera also has a two-stop neutral density filter built into it. I know it does, and that's a whole other ball game of things that you can do with this camera, and we'll cover that in another video because this video is already uh, long enough. But for right now, what's important to understand about the leaf shutter is that it enables you to shoot with a shallow depth of field in bright sunlight and still use your flash, which is something that professional photographers have a hard time with when they are using a regular DSLR with a regular focal plane shutter. So that's what it's all about. That's how a leaf shutter works, and that's one of the things that makes the Fuji X100F so cool and so much fun to play with. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to leave your comments uh, below, and I'll see you next time.